So um, today we will talk about the air photos and also satellite images. So this week we will focus on the first type of the uh, commonly used uh, spatial data. So those are the air photos and also satellite images. Um, we will download those photos and also we will view those uh, data into ArcGIS Pro to so see how they look like and where we can download that from different resources. So when we talk about the air photos and also satellite images, so there is one specific uh, subject in geography that is called uh, remote sensing. So remote sensing is a science that uh, prim primarily focus on analyzing and also studying um, air photos and also satellite images. So in, normally in geography, we have GRS and also we have remote sensing. Uh, so here are the definition of the remote sensing. Uh, so basically, it is a science that analyzing and also collecting information about an, ob about an object without uh, physical contact. Uh, so here are some two examples. So you can see here, uh, as long as you are not touching the object, so there's a distance between the object and also the sensor. So that is kind of the, that fell in the def category of the remote sensing. So it can be like uh, um, a few centimeters, or it can be in a space from the space where we are using the satellites, um, capturing uh, images. Um, so that can be from, I'm not sure, a thousand meters. So uh, that is remote sensing. So remote sensing is a science that um, folks analyzing, starting air photos and also uh, satellite images. So let's look at the our first uh, air photo that the the first photo taken by uh, humans. So that was in uh, that's in 1826. <coughs> um, in French, so you can see a person take a photo uh, in his backyard. And the first airy photo, so that means that people that fly in the, in the air and also take a photo, so that is still in France. And also it's about 40 years later, so we can see the Paris uh, on this photo, so it's, it is the first known air photo that was taken by human beings. Um, if you look at the photo that was taken in the past, so I think this photo is something that during the first world war, where you can see people tie the cameras to the birds, to the pigeon, and they just fly, um, I guess, everywhere they like. And also you can see, you can see the wings in the photos. Uh, so nowadays, uh, we have drones and we, we attach the high resolution drone, uh, air cam cameras to those drones and we can fly anywhere we want. Uh, and we can take those, you can see the, the multi-band high spatial resolution photos. Um, air photos are satellite images, so actually there's no um, big difference between why, why you call it images and why, why you call it photos. So normally if the, if the image or if the picture was taken by satellite, so we normally call it images, uh, otherwise we call it photos. Um, and also for images, normally we mean that it has multiple bands, uh, which we will explain later in this lecture. Um, and here's some e application examples. So uh, you can observe the structure change uh, before or uh, and after an event. So that can be a natural disaster or that can be a, uh, any other events or instance. Uh, we can also do a global search so we can find out uh, the objects on the, uh, on, the, on the earth and also without visiting that place. Okay, so those are uh, so, uh, air photos and also uh, satellite images. So before we continue, I want to review some very phys uh, very basic uh, physics that you may have learned from high school 
Oh, um, so basically, that is we we will talk about the wavelength of the light. So why we can see different colors of the ob of object. Um, we know that uh, the, the light actually contains uh, several wavelengths, and the reason that we saw we see the uh, the objects have different colors is because those objects are reflecting the light in different uh, uh, wavelengths, so in different range of the wavelengths. So light sent out from the sun. Uh, so uh, so there are several wavelengths, and we can see it starting from very small wavelengths all the way to very long wavelengths. So as long when the wavelengths increase, uh, the energy decrease. You can see when the wavelengths increase, the energy decrease. So for the short range of the wavelengths, so the energy is very high, and they also are um, very dangerous to human beings. So if we are exposed to gamma rays, then we might die. And X-rays are also very strong, and so that can help you to do to find out problems in the body. So they can transfer your body, so that do the physical test. And we are not recommended to do the X-rays very frequently. So we are we are only going to do it when necessary. Uh, and also ultra ultraviolet, and also, and next we can see for this very tiny small range of the wavelengths. So those are the band of the visible light. So those are the band that our human can see. So we can actually see a very tiny part, a part of the wavelength band range. Uh, so we can see that from purple, the short wavelengths, uh, green, longer, and also yellow, and also red. Okay, so we can our human eyes can see detect wavelengths in this range, and uh, and when longer than those wavelengths range, so we have near infrared and also infrared. So those we we cannot see that, but that is also generally safe to human beings, and also if even longer, so that uh, we cannot see those, but we are using that one for like our radar, TV, radio, etc. Okay, so that wavelength and. Our human eyes can only see this range, uh, but we can design the sensors that can detect the wavelengths in, in a larger range area. And reflectance. Okay, uh, so no, we know that all the energy, all the light that sent out from the sound uh, goes through and also reach our target object. So those a light or those energy I will call it those energy um, part of that energy will go through the object okay part of the energy will go through the object part of the energy or the light will be reflected and part of the energy will stay inside of that object so stay inside the object that will become the energy of the object so that will increase the temperature. So the temperature of the object will increase. Okay, so that is how the uh, light, how the energy um, ended up with. So the ether goes pass through the, and that object, part will be reflected and also part will be absorbed. Okay, so that total amount of radiant flux instance or the total amount of the energy and we define the reflectance is that the part that has been reflected of the energy or the light or the radiant uh, radiant flexi instant and divided by the total amount that's sent out by the sun okay so the total amount sent out by the sun and and also reflected so that is divided by the reflection uh, reflectance and our sensors can only capture the reflected energy so our sensors can only capture the reflected light or reflected energy so for example 
the sun send out the light part will go through the object part will maintain that object so that it will convert the energy uh, for example to the tree and also part will be reflected to our sensor and this is the part that our sensor can capture and for example if the total is 100 percent and only 30 percent have been reflected and captured by the sensor and the reflectance of the tree uh, in this case will be 30 percent okay so that's your reflectance